Point Pattern Analysis studies the spatial arrangement of points in geographical space. It has applications in a wide range of areas, including wildlife ecology, biology, epidemiology, natural resource management, and criminology. This presentation discusses two common techniques to identify the location of point clusters based on spatial proximity, which are nearest neighbor hierarchical clustering and scan statistics. This complements the kernel density estimation technique, which was introduced earlier in this series of presentations on point pattern analysis. CrimeStep provides a range of spatial clustering methods, including k-means clustering, kernel density clustering, and nearest neighbor hierarchical clustering. The next few slides focus on nearest neighbor hierarchical clustering. This method identifies groups of points that are spatially close and satisfy several criteria. Points that fit the criteria are clustered into first-order clusters. The routine then conducts subsequent clustering to produce a hierarchy of clusters. The first-order clusters are themselves clustered into second-order clusters, where only clusters are included that are spatially closer than a threshold distance. That threshold distance is or is not calculated anew for the second level depending on the procedure settings. The second order clusters, in turn, are clustered into third order clusters. This reclustering process is continued until either all clusters converge into a single cluster or, more likely, the clustering criteria are not satisfied. These figures illustrate this process for 617 observed and attempted residential burglaries that were reported to the LA County Sheriff's Office over a one-month period. The nearest neighbor hierarchical clustering identifies with the chosen settings 58 first-order clusters, 8 second-order clusters, and 1 third-order cluster. It should be noted that with nearest neighbor hierarchical clustering, not all events are assigned to clusters. Each point is assigned to either one cluster at a hierarchical cluster level or none at all. To identify the approximate cluster location, CrimeStat allows the cluster to be output as either an ellipse, a convex hull, or both. The maps shown here use an ellipse output. Each ellipse is an abstraction of the cluster which covers more than 50% of the events. The first criterion in identifying clusters is whether points are closer than a specified threshold distance. There are two alternatives in selecting the threshold distance. With the first method, events are considered to be a member of a first order cluster if they lie within the expected mean nearest neighbor distance for a random point pattern, plus or minus a confidence interval value obtained from the standard error of the mean random distance defined by the user. The confidence interval can be indirectly set on a slider bar. Moving the slider bar to the left results in a larger confidence interval and, therefore, a lower threshold distance. This means that features have to be closer to be part of a cluster. Moving the slider bar to the right increases the threshold distance. Thus, features can be farther apart and still be in a cluster. The second alternative for selecting a threshold distance is to choose a fixed distance expressed in miles, nautical miles, feet, kilometers, or meters. The main advantage in this approach is that the search radius can be specified exactly. Whichever method is used for selecting a threshold distance, a second clustering criterion is the minimum number of points that are required for each cluster. This criterion is used to reduce the number of very small clusters. The settings for these parameters will have a major bearing on the way in which clusters are identified. These three maps illustrate the effect of different threshold distances on the cluster results. The dataset consists of 397 geocoded termite sightings in southeast Florida, which are visualized as blue dots. In all three maps, a constraint of five points or more per cluster is applied to the nearest neighbor hierarchical clustering process. The threshold distance is set through the fixed distance method. The left image shows seven first order clusters obtained with a threshold distance of 0.3 miles. With a less stringent distance criterion of 0.5 miles in the middle figure, 
the cluster number increases to 14. Lastly, a fixed threshold distance of 0.7 miles results in 21 clusters in the rightmost figure. It must be noted that not all of these clusters are necessarily significant. The larger the selected maximum threshold distance is, the greater the likelihood that clusters will be found by chance. Distance thresholds of 0.3 and 0.5 miles also result in several second order clusters, which are, however, not visualized in these maps. These maps show how a variation in the minimum number of events required per cluster affects the cluster result. A fixed distance threshold of 0.5 miles was chosen with all three maps. In the given examples, the largest number of clusters, namely 33, can be found with the least stringent requirement of a minimum of only three points per cluster as shown to the left. By increasing this number to 5 and 10 points per cluster, this decreases the cluster number to 14 and 5 respectively, as shown in the figures in the middle and right. Scan statistics are used to detect and evaluate clusters of cases in either a purely temporal, purely spatial, or space-time setting. This is accomplished by gradually scanning a window across time and or space and noting the number of observed and expected observations inside the window at each location. The focus of this presentation is on the purely spatial scan statistic, leaving aside the temporal aspect. A spatial scan statistic essentially carries out multiple local tests of the null hypothesis of no raised incidence in the local area across the entire study region. It needs to properly account for the multiple testing problem. Otherwise, several local tests would indicate areas as significant, although this occurred by chance alone. The end result of this procedure is a map of significant circles as shown in this figure. Six circles with high incidence rates, such as for diseases, are drawn with heavier line weights. The spatial scan statistic developed by Kulldorff in the late 90s can adjust clusters for underlying background inhomogeneity. In other words, it takes into account factors already known to cause clustering, such as population density. This is implemented in the freely available software package, SatScan, which was also used to produce the cluster results in the following slides. Put simply, the spatial scan statistic identifies those circular scanning windows for which the ratio of events inside the circle over the number outside the circle is significantly higher than what can be expected in a random point pattern. The random point pattern may have been adjusted for background inhomogeneity. For specifying underlying background inhomogeneity, SatScan provides various models. One of them is a Bernoulli probability model, where case points and control points are provided as individual point data. For example, cases could be individually mapped occurrences of a special type of lung cancer, whereas control could be individually mapped occurrences of all lung cancer types. SatScan offers also the discrete Poisson model for region-based case and control counts. For example, the model results can be summarized by census block group. The discrete Poisson model will be showcased on the following slides. This example demonstrates the use of the discrete Poisson model to identify clustering in polygon data using case and control data. The cases include observed and attempted residential burglaries in Los Angeles County over a 30-day observation window. The cases are visualized as yellow dots in this map. For the analysis, these events are aggregated by census tract. Further, since it is known that the number of burglaries rises with population, population per census tract is included as a control variable in this example. The population per census tract is visualized through the polygon layer. To run the discrete Poisson model in SatScan, the software needs three data files. The first one is the case file, containing the ID of the census tract polygon and the number of cases per census tract. This table shows an excerpt of the case file for census tracts of Los Angeles County. It highlights the polygon ID and the number of burglaries for two selected census tracts. As can be seen, one and two burglaries occurred in the two census tracts with polygon ID 1350 and 1351 respectively. The second file needed is the population file. 
This file contains information about the control variable. The first column refers again to the census tract polygon ID. The second one shows the year, which can be set to zero for the purely spatial scan statistic. And the last column reports the population count per census tract. The third file contains coordinates of cases and controls. In this example, we use aerial data and not point data, so the coordinates refer to the centroids of census tracts. The location of centroids can either be specified as geographic coordinates with latitude and longitude, or, like in this case, as northing and easting values in a projected coordinate system. The northing and easting values shown in this table refer to the fifth zone of the California State Plain Coordinate System and are given in U.S. feet and the NAD 83 datum. As an advanced option, it is possible in SATSCAN to use a scanning window that consists not only of circles, but also of ellipses of different shapes and angles. This is the option applied in this showcase. The output from the program specifies for each cluster, among others, the center coordinates, the level of significance, and the number of expected and observed cases within that cluster. In this example, the spatial scan statistic detected eight clusters at the significance level of 5%. These clusters indicate clusters of burglaries that are more concentrated than what would be expected on the basis of the population distribution alone. This slide summarizes the presentation. It started with a description of the nearest neighbor hierarchical clustering method and illustrated how different settings for the threshold distance and the minimum number of points per cluster affect the resulting cluster map. Then the presentation continued with an introduction to scan statistics and explained different options for including control data in the SAT scan software. A showcase was presented that identified significant clusters of burglaries in residential areas under consideration of population count data at the census track level as a control.